I want to talk now a little bit about the evolution of the software tools that I've used in building these online libraries. They started with better display and searching software such as the Luna imaging software that I use which is shown here. It's a basic uh, and very flexible tool for handling a large image database. These are thumbnails representing each image with the data record on the left. You can bring multiple images into the Luna image workspace. Five images here. Move them around. Look at them in their uh, proportional size. Do annotations. This is a map of New York City from 1811. Add links to a subway map, a modern subway map of New York. And zoom in and see details. You can also create presentations and slideshows here within the application and also export them. The new version of the Luna software is exciting to me because it's all about uh, doing everything in the browser. You can link to every page. You can do mashups shown here where you can share them instantly with a URL or embed them in blogs or courseware or other things. It also has facet faceted browsing and browsing by categories. Once the collection got very large, I began to get worried that people were not able to use serendipity or accident to find things. So we built a more whimsical tool called the Collections Ticker. It's like a stock ticker. It's a separate little window shown here at the bottom. The whole collection in thumbnail view moves across in about eight hours in random order or in alphabetical order. When you find something you like, you click on it, it opens in the Luna database, gives you the zoom in, zoom out, and all of the uh, cataloging information. Early on, we added GIS functions to the online library. This required georeferencing of historical maps. Here's the Lewis and Clark map from 1814 again. Georeferencing it means that we have to twist it and turn it using a desktop application here, ArcMap. And this is the georeferenced version of the Lewis and Clark map. It's now brought into modern geographical space and we can overlay here various boundary boundaries and roads and cities and even data layers. Each one of these yellow dots represents a Lewis and Clark's campsite. We then designed tools to look at the same map in a, in a global interface here on ESRI's Arc Globe. Again, desktop. We can see the Lewis and Clark map against the globe. Wrapping the globe, we can spin it, turn it, and get a whole other way of looking at it. Combine it with that same Earth at Night NASA layer and we can see how the area they explored has settled up amazingly over 200 years. We brought all this online using SRI's Arc Map. We designed special viewers in Java, the quad viewer and the image viewer. Here's a, a map service we built on San Francisco with different historic maps from San Francisco. This is the 1890 map of San Francisco in the application. Here's the 1869, the 59, and the 1915. Opening all these maps, which are vastly different sizes, in the quad view, we now see them same size, same scale, same orientation. We zoom in and we can look at four different time periods in San Francisco's history and see changes here along the waterfront. We can change the windows to go to the aerial view. And all four windows move as we zoom and pan. We also designed an image overlay viewer. This 1869 map of the uh, north coast of San Francisco City, North Beach. As we move the slider, we can fade in the modern aerial view and see how the coves filled in over time. Or we can use the swipe view and swipe the map from left to right and see the same kind of change. We also put all of our maps in the EKI time map search interface, a whole other kind of GIS. We did a rough georeferencing of about 10,000 of the maps, just locating the four corners. You can search for the maps in EKI's viewer, bring them up, 
these are maps of South America and you can find everything by geographical uh, place. Our next exploration was the creation of a 3D GIS. First, with desktop applications, shown here taking this map of Yosemite Valley from 1883 that's all around us now in Second Life. As we zoom into it, you can see the wonderful hachuring they used to indicate the cliffs. And here it is now georeferenced. We were then able to take the georeference map and combine it here with a digital elevation model of the valley, all the heights. And this little animation shows how we sh literally stretched the Yosemite map across the digital elevation. Here we created a web page with a little flash preview and we were able to build using gaming software this 3D view now of Yosemite Valley. Disseminate this over the web. This is still on our website. You can zoom in, rotate, spin the valley around, and even combine it with modern layers. Then we put it in to Google Earth. We're actually opening this up this month. Now we can see the Yosemite map in the Sierra Nevada in a, in a much broader context. We have the digital elevation model built into Google Earth. We can do transparency. We can zoom in and then tilt and move through the valley. Then we did what we see all around us now. We brought this entire map into Second Life where you can fly through it. Jason and the team at Centric used the digital elevation model with a lot of hard work to create this wonderful landscape that's quite extensive and broad and this is a whole new application of a 3D GIS with historical maps. Late in 2006, I created a public historical map layer in Google Earth, which is now in the gallery layer called Rumsey Historical Maps. We started with 16 historical maps. The first one was the Cassini 1790 globe and we're going to add another hundred uh, just later this month actually 104. This allows for all the tools of Google Earth and its growing layers of content to be seen with the historical maps and explored in various ways. Here are some examples. This wonderful Eagle map of the United States from 1833, San Francisco from 1853, the built city in black then we can turn on the 3D building layer in Google Earth and see the modern city in relation to the old city. Africa, 1787. Tokyo, 1680. Three maps of the West Indies from 1775. A map of Seattle from 1890. Various maps of Europe from the 18th century. a map of Lima, Peru from the 1860s and another map uh, from Japan, a map of Kyoto from the 1700s, Tokyo from the 19th century and here we can see all the maps now that will total 120 shown with these little icons uh, and how they're placed around the earth. Google Earth hosts all kinds of information layers from worldwide sources. Here's the 1836 map in Google Earth of New York City. Then we can turn on the street layer, the 3D building layer as we did in San Francisco. We can turn on the Wikipedia layer that they've just added. Google Book Search. the Google community layer, and on and on. Panoramio layer. And we can also look at zip codes and then we can fade into other historic map 
layers. Ending in this 1865 map, we can do measurement. Here's using their measurement tool, we measure the area. In 1836, it was 17.71 square miles with a perimeter of 26.64. Then we put that same shapefile on top of the modern city and we can see how it's grown.